welcome back to the Flow and Flourish podcast, ladies and gents. I know we got a few guys that listen in too, so welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the second episode in this series. Well, I guess it's actually the third, but the second with a guest on the podcast for Women's History Month. And I am so excited. And I know I say that all the time too, but y'all know I mean it. I'm super excited. I love really being able to bring you unique perspectives and thought leadership and expertise in a variety of different fields. And so today we are talking to the chief grief crusader, Hardeen Mercier. But before I hop into reading her bio and telling you a little bit more about what the episode will be about, I do have to let you know that this episode is being brought to you by the capacity calculator. Yes, my capacity calculator that really will help you figure out what is really on your plate and do you even have room to take on more or do you need to start taking things off? So if you feel like you're overwhelmed, if you feel as though there aren't enough hours in the day and you really just feel like you are at wit's end, then you need to go take the capacity calculator. You can find it in my IG bio, or you can go directly to my website at NicoleRone.com and click that little banner at the top and it'll take you directly there. Not only are you going to be able to see what's on your plate, depending on what your capacity level is, I also give you some nice little tidbits and tips on how to manage your capacity wherever it is for you. So head on over to my website or go to the link in my Instagram bio and take your capacity calculator today. Okay, so the episode today, listen, we are talking all about grief. And I know that does not sound like fun. And the truth is grief is not fun, but it is freeing. And it's part of the healing process, regardless of what kind of grief you're going through. And so Hardeen is going to talk to us all about what grief looks like, how to really navigate through it, and to some extent help us understand how grief can be kind of sexy. Don't believe me? Keep on listening. Let me go ahead and read her formal bio so you can get right into this episode. Hardeen Mercier is a licensed clinical social worker, certified grief coach, and transformational speaker. She is also the host of the Redefining Grief podcast. Her dean's life calling is to create non-judgmental spaces for broken hearts to heal so purposeful living can be restored. Her dean believes that happiness and sadness exist in a delicate balance. She is committed to redefining how we as a society understand grief. She defines grief as being normal and a natural reaction to any loss or change in normalcy. Through her teachings, Hardeen encourages individuals to understand that life is not perfect, but it must be lived. Hardeen strongly believes the goal is to not allow our unhappiness to overtake the good times, the successes and the laughter and joys in order to maintain our emotional well-being. As the founder of Redefining Grief, Hardeen has built a community of individuals committed to living their best life anchored down in purposeful living despite what life has thrown at them. Please help me welcome Miss Herdeen Mercier to the Flow and Flourish podcast. Herdeen! Welcome to the Flow and Flourish podcast, ma'am. I am so excited. And I say that every week because I really am excited to be here. But with you in particular, I was sharing with you offline how I have been following you and watching your work. And I love the history that you are making with redefining grief. And I would really love it if you could just tell us a little bit, first and foremost, how you kind of ended up in this space. And then we'll jump right in and talk a little bit more about how our capacity is impacted by grief. Hey, sis, you know, I got to say before we even move forward (laughs) that I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you for not allowing fear or imposter syndrome or what people might think stop you from activating your purpose. Mm. And so you ain't gonna make me cry today. I'm <laughs> I've been holding it. You together, know, okay? you know I welcome tears. That's what we do. <laughs> yes. We embrace the tears that comes our way. 
Period. What we ain't gonna do today. <laughs> <laughs> and so I believe in giving people their flowers, and I'm giving you your flowers on your podcast. So every time you may forget or that imposter syndrome show up, just go replay this. Ooh, thank you're not only beautiful outside, but you're beautiful inside and you're doing kingdom work and keep doing it. Yes, ma'am. I received that. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And you my consistency word partner. Now, how in the world is that, right? Like I know as we started to just kind of communicate a little bit, both of us choosing consistency, like if that ain't divine, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. I know. <laughs> I know. And we were reading the same book, The Big yes. Leap, at the same time. Man, yeah. God ordained this. He knew what he was doing, don't he always? He did. He always, he always. And I always thank Patrice Washington for bringing us together. Yeah, me too. She She's that magnet like, that brought us together. I was just telling one of my um, co workers or previous co workers how Patrice is the real MVP. <laughs> <laughs> she can bring everybody together. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I know that you went through Purpose to Platform as well. Talk to me a little bit about what you're doing and how you ended up doing what you're doing now. I am the Chief Grief Crusader and host of the Redefining Grief podcast. Now, when I went into P2P, that's not what I went in for. <laughs> you know? Yes. I went in to build my wifidence brand. Ooh. You understand? Mm-hmm. I was a therapist. I am a therapist. My husband is a therapist as well. Dr. Jameson Mercier, I love you. Hey, we love uh, you, hubby. And I would say this. I went in serving, though. And it was in my serving, my gift presented itself to Patrice and Courage and my mastermind sisters at the time. And I will never forget that time in Orlando, Florida, where Patrice and Courage Molino looked at me and said, I know you're doing wife dance, but grief is your thing. Mm. And I was like, can't be. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it, can't, it can't be because that comes so easy and natural to me. Mm-hmm. And they were like, nope. Grief is your thing. But what about all this work I did with the wife and his brand and building and the people I paid and the website and all of you telling me, God, I got to start over <laughs> and walk away. And so with that being said, when I went home after doing the presentation in our mastermind group that weekend in Orlando, Florida, I was like, I started connecting the dots like a life review. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to be a mortician in my life. Mm. From as, as far back as when I was seven years old, I would cry if my parents did not take me to funerals with them. I remember hearing that in your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So when I tell you, you are born with purpose. Mm-hmm. You just have to be still enough to receive it and see it. Mm, say it again. One more time. You have to be still enough to receive it and see it. And sometimes it may require someone else to remove the scales off your eyes. Oh my gosh. That is like music to my ears because so often, and I was just having this conversation, honestly, on Clubhouse last night, that too often we're busy looking outside of ourselves for everything else. We're taking the programs, we're talking to other people, we are you know, going on YouTube, we're on Google trying to find what our purpose is and how to fix us with my air quotes, right? But it's all, (laughs) it's all within us. And if we allow ourselves the time and create the capacity to really be still and be quiet, then we can tap into that. And I personally, I found that I am really drawn to death and that sounds bad, but it's because I'm a giver and I'm an empath and I feel all the mm-hmm. feelings, right? And mm-hmm. so to me, not that it's easy to do this, but you kind of make grief a little sexy. Not sexy like listen, but it's like you were <laughs> it, it it's like you were in my mind because 
in my room, when I had this conversation with God, I said, okay, God. <laughs> in that voice, I, right? In that tone. Yes, I did. In that tone. Okay, God. The people that do grief stuff, I ain't gonna lie. They look boring. Um, that ain't my personality. I creepy I, sometimes. I, yeah. yeah, right. And so I said to myself, well, if this is what I need to do, it has to be on my terms and you have to allow me to make it sexy. Mm -hmm. Just like that. And the moment I said those words, I heard my whisper tell me, and that's going to be a retreat. So now making grief sexy is trademarked. Really? Um, I didn't even know that. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. Making grief sexy is trademarked. My attorney handles all of that stuff. And I will say this, it is going to be a fire retreat turn into conference that's going to impact women and men around the world. Well, you know, I want to be in the building because as we were talking offline, like, Nardine, grief is so prevalent in so many different ways. I remember mm-hmm. when I was in HR, we had, this was in, I want to say 2015 or so, we had two employees pass away within days of each other. And so we brought mm-hmm. in an EAP, employee assistance program person, to really talk to the company about grief. And I was so fascinated. I'm like, wow, they have people that do that to really Mm -hmm. help you process and to think through. Mm -hmm. And so through that, she mentioned something that has stayed with me forever, that when you have any kind of a left, right, like a husband left or somebody passed away or you moved or you left a job or any significant event, most people don't identify that it's grief that they're feeling. And in that situation, although with me being the HR leader at the time in that organization, I had just spoken with one of the ladies the day before, promoted another one a couple of days before then, I didn't understand why my heart was so heavy outside of the empath piece. And it was because about two years prior to that, I lost my uncle, who was like my rock. Mm -hmm. And so losing those two people in the work setting triggered me to feel the same feelings as when my uncle passed. I'm talking about, I was boohooing, snotting and all of that. And so to really understand, I want you to talk to us first and foremost, maybe if you can, a little bit about that, about the lefts and how grief shows up for us. And we may not even realize that it's grief. I will say this, the lefts are not odd, they're life. Mm. But what makes it feels odd is because nobody taught us what to do when things go left. Ooh, exactly. You know, I'm going to have to hashtag that, right? (laughs) We can share, sis. We can share. So I will say this, you know, grief is this normal and natural reaction to any loss. So it's not just the death of someone. I think this entire month of March, I'm really educating with my wisdom of the day grief marathon. And it's just saying we grieve when we retire Mm. because of the loss of schedule. We grieve COVID because the loss of normalcy. We grieve our finances. We grieve when we get married. Say it ain't so. Yes. You grieve your singleness life. The life that I prayed for to get married, I still grieve it. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, husband, if you're listening. I did grieve a little bit. I know you did too. It's okay. It's natural. Yeah. It's, it's normal. It's natural. It's natural. And grieving allows and opens the door to our heart to say healthy goodbyes. Oh. And individuals do not know what to do when you give them an invitation, whether you're grieving a relationship that's ending whether it's a business partner, I have found every time you extend the olive branch of let's have a healthy goodbye conversation. Oh, I can't, I'm sick. I can't do this. I can't show up because even if you say this will be loving, they don't get it. They don't want to get it because they don't want to get uncomfortable and to heal grief. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable in a season and vulnerable enough to open up your heart to heal. 
Because grief is not an intellectual thing. Grief is an emotional thing. And it's in a matter of the heart. Because oftentimes people think I'm smart, but why is this happening? <laughs> you, may be, <laughs> you, you may be smart, but emotionally, what is your age? It's that emotional intelligence, right? Yeah. And, and that's why I wanted you here because, you know, as I mentioned, this is the heart flow pillar. This is what it's for. And in this pillar, we talk all about the things of our heart, the things that flow from our heart flow out of our mouth, they flow out of our actions, they show in our behaviors, and really being able to be honest about what's going on in our heart. And as you were talking about extending that olive branch to have a healthy goodbye, it made me think mm -hmm. about what I was doing in corporate where I was doing exit interviews. And so mm -hmm. it literally was the last conversation that people would have before they went into a different role. This is, of course, if they resigned. If somebody just, you know, got fired, we ain't having no exit interview. Exit. I'm just exiting. But there should be. There should be in a safe manner because, you know, people. Yes. And I mean, people. there's a process. Yeah. We put a process together mm -hmm. to kind of talk it through. And my mom used to be like, girl, you know, they hurt people that's fired. No, I wish you get on out of HR. <laughs> like, <it's> okay, mom. <laughs> but even sometimes in those formal safe spaces of the exit interviews, people would make every excuse to not come, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm too busy, like you said, or I really don't have anything to say. Can I just fill out this survey? But what I found through my approach as a coach was really creating this safe space for them to give me feedback about how we could make the organization better mm -hmm. and to encourage them and let them know, listen, I want you to go on to your new role and be able to flow, be able to flourish but let's end it here on a good note. Let's talk about what went well, what didn't go well. And so many people are uncomfortable having that conversation just they about work. They don't, don't know how. No, nope. no, they don't know how. And I think that is a disservice that we don't even realize. It's a generational disservice. And what I am on a mission to do is teach mothers as well as fathers how to heal their unresolved grief so that they can be the last generation that does not know what to do. Oh. And so you educate and you empower your kids through their emotions by allowing them to have them and no longer saying, what you crying for? Mm. I'm going to send you to the room to cry. We're not doing that in 2021, but we're asking meaningful questions that say, what does your tears represent? Mm. What does your frustration represent? What does the sadness represent? So now it forces them to stop and think so that they can have the verbiage to express what they're feeling. Because the truth of the matter is when you allow individuals, and that is my gift, my gift is allowing individuals to come in, release the burden without any shame. That's and rem mm, yeah. and wear their crown. It may be cricket in this season, but it's going to get fixed. We're going to straighten it out. But it's still on your head. And oftentimes people think it is over and they forget that they're royalty. They are. We forget Male and female. Are, right? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So I've been in training all my life. <laughs> Literally your whole life for this. I've been in training all my life. I've even had times where I worked at a funeral home. I just wasn't engaged with the bodies like that. It was, you know, that didn't bring me. It was the families. It was dealing with them. And I just was like, okay, God, but I didn't know he was setting me up for this. Mm -hmm. See, he was giving it to me a little bit at a time, but I didn't realize it. But the moment I said, okay, God. I'm going to make grief sexy. And I was sharing this with Patrice on my podcast the other day. She celebrated the Redefining Grief podcast one year anniversary with me. It was so impactful. And I said to her, because I'm operating in my gift, I'm in a season I don't have time to pitch, but people chase me. Mm -hmm. And not chase me in this erotic way. 
Mm-hmm. It's chasing me because they want a piece of the wisdom in the gift. And I am available to my grief crusaders community to educate and inform. You can grieve moving. Mm-hmm. You can grieve anything. When your heart breaks, you honor that grief. Yes. And oftentimes we're not honoring the grief. We're pacifying the grief through food. You get in the, in the relationship. So you just get another man, but your heart's still broken for the two men's before that man. So, so you just continue the pattern, but in order to break the pattern and deal with the unresolved grief, you got to be willing to what I say, talk about in my anchors that I teach is tell the truth. Mm -hmm. You see the truth shall set you free. We all know that, right? Mm -hmm. But in the truth anchor, it says it liberates the soul. Mm -hmm. And some of us are soul sick and are not liberated because of the fact we are not willing to tell the ugly, messy truth. And I tell my clients, I like, you go to your friends with your fluff fluff. Right. You come to me when you want to talk about the dirty, icky, emotional stuff. The real and baby, stuff. The, the real stuff. stuff. Don't pay me to, you can go talk to your friend about the flow fluff. Pay me to let's talk about the messy stuff. I am your emotional accountability coach. And listen, Hardeen, I love that because... In heart flow, it aligns to your anchor as well. It's telling the truth. I say all the time, you cannot fix what you will not face. And if you are not honest with yourself about what's going on in your heart, especially when it comes to grief, it's going to keep showing up over and over and over and over. And I love how you talked about even moving is something that you can grieve because we literally experienced that as a family for the first time ever when we downsized. We were grieving the space that we had. We were Mm -hmm. grieving things like the long driveway and the backyard. And so I talked to my therapist at the time because I didn't know how to process it. I'm thankful that I know about emotional intelligence from my work in Mm -hmm. corporate and human resources. But I'm like, how do I explain that to my five-year-old and Mm -hmm. to my 16-year-old who are grieving the place that this is where they've known for most of their life? And so she recommended that we do like a goodbye ceremony. Now, you know, my husband was looking upside my head like, we about to do what? (laughs) But we did. And (laughs) I'm laughing because he was definitely like, I'm sorry, what? (laughs) We're saying goodbye to what? Yes, this is not just about us. It's for our children and for them to be able to process their emotions. And when I tell you the peace that I felt as we drove away in the moving truck, it helped Mm -hmm. tremendously. And it literally Mm -hmm. gave me the capacity to be able to enjoy the new Mm -hmm. place that we were moving to. And so I would love it if you could talk a little bit about how does grief impact our capacity, especially in our heart flow? You may have to clutch your pearls because this is what it's going to be. I'm clutching. Unresolved (laughs) Unresolved grief becomes a distraction that robs you from purposeful living. Oh, now break that down. So the individuals that have the unresolved grief because their heart is hardened from the first heartbreak, they've never released it through the truth anchor. Mm. And now when they go to that second anchor that I talk about, which is the heart anchor, and that says hearts can be restored, they heart can be restored because they're not willing to be vulnerable in a season to tell the truth. Mm. And so purpose sometimes requires us to not get distracted by the emotional things. But oftentimes when we have an emotional experience that is shameful or filled with guilt, we run instead of embrace. And so what I teach is embrace the messy. Yes. And most of us don't do that though. And we're not taught to do that. Our Mm -hmm. our people before us taught us to run from it. Stay busy. Don't think about it. Ain't nobody got time to cry. None of that stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I say, bump what everybody else say, but I'm telling you because I lived it. These anchors that I talk about, I lived it. The truth anchor liberates your soul. Mm -hmm. The heart anchor 
it says hearts can be restored. My heart was restored from some of my hardest things. And my hardest things wasn't around a husband. It wasn't around the kids. It wasn't around the house. My heartbreak and sorrow and riff with God was about my purpose. Mm. That was my biggest grief. Like you tell me my parents migrated here by boat. I've done everything they've said to have me in the United States a year after leaving Haiti. And then to tell me I've done everything. I've gone to school. I wasn't an AB student. I need to tell that truth because it liberates the soul. But see, God still said you have purpose, right? And so go through school, the first in my family to get a master's degree, go to them people job. (laughs) And I keep saying, this ain't it. When I look at my check, I'm like, where the American dream my parents talked about? This surely ain't it, Lord Jesus. Help me out. Because, (laughs) you know. But then I say to myself, it was the journey, but it was me being willing enough to talk about the heartbreak, right? Mm -hmm. Then that third anchor talks about connection anchor, Mm -hmm. community. We need community that's going to see us and hear us without judgment. Yes. Some of us say, well, I got community. Is my mama, my auntie, my uncle, the people at my job. Is it healthy though? Thank you. The moment I ask, how do they support you emotionally? Crickets. That's not your emotional community. Uh-uh. They are part of the problem. <laughs> they are part that's of- the truth that don't nobody want to tell. Can yeah. we tell for a second? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody wants to tell the perfect picture of their, you know, but the truth of the matter is that's not your community. You haven't identified your community and the reason you're emotionally stuck is because nobody's being your biggest cheerleader with your flaws. Mm. Okay. So good. And really, even with that too, like most of us are grieving, not having that support. And I know for me, I was seeking that. I'm not, listen, I'm the second oldest of 10 siblings. I got siblings up and down the block. Right. Mm -hmm. But the level of support that I needed as I have advanced and evolved on my journey has been different. And so similar to you, I'm the first one to have a master's degree. I'm the first one Mm -hmm. to get married. I'm the first one to have kids. I'm the one in, you know, most Mm -hmm. of my circles. And I grieved being able to have people to lean on. I grieved not really having that level of support. And so to your point, it hardened my heart to where I would say, I don't need no help. I don't want nobody. I got mm-hmm. this. But that leads mm-hmm. to burnout, which yep. leads to frustration, which yep. leads to resentment. And it's yep. all stemming from grief that's in our heart. And mm-hmm. as a capacity coach, you know that it would not be me if I didn't say something about how all of those things then show up in every single area of our lives. And as I Mm -hmm. shared with you on your podcast, not dealing with the emotional pieces and the grief of, you know, missing something that I wanted or even never had Mm -hmm. got to a point where it had me and I see you fighting for my life. And so many of us are running around with unprocessed, undealt with emotions and grief that we need to learn how to release in a healthy way. So how... I guess, give me a couple of ways that the listeners can process grief and their emotions, especially in COVID right now, right? Like many of us have Mm -hmm. lost friends and or family members or jobs, have downsized like I have. There's a whole lot of shifting, changing and lefts going on. How do we manage that in a healthy way so that we're not letting everything build up and then explode like a volcano? I think you have to have that community. Mm. Everybody needs it. You need a therapist. You need a good you spiritual guide. A therapist. That's a whole. Nother I was just episode. look. I just said it. You need a spiritual guide, and remember that your spiritual guide is human. Mm-hmm. Some of y'all be tripping. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think you need community, and I think in a society where we believe that we can do all things on our own. 
Mm. I think even the good book says is your prayers are being heard more when it's just not you. And so like my wisdom circle, Ooh, they, the ladies in my life that snatch my edges. They tell me the truth. They encourage me. They support me through their actions. Mm. I have learned love. Mm. Love is just, it's a verb for me. I know what it, yeah, yeah. It's action, I should say. It's an action. It's an action. And too many of us have been marinating in an illusion of love and don't know what to do when we experience true love. Can I be real? Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's your podcast, boo. I was having this conversation a couple of days ago about how I have a very good husband. We've been through some things. We are going on nine years of marriage this month. It'll be nine years that we've been married, but I had to learn how to let him love me. Mm -hmm. And that is so hard. If your heart is full of grief and it's full Mm -hmm. of, other mess and resentment and not forgiving. And so I absolutely adore the fact that you say we need to be in community because so many of us are suffering in silence because we are embarrassed. We don't want nobody to know what's really going on because we might look like we ain't got it all together. When the Mm -hmm. truth is, don't nobody have it all together because how you show up publicly might not be how you show up privately. And until you can admit that there's stuff that's going on that needs to be handled. You're going to stay stuck. So I, who you opened up a whole nother can of worms. <laughs> and I will say this, for example, pet loss, pet loss. Oh, don't make very, me cry. Yeah. Pet loss is very hard for people to swallow. We had our own pet loss. We had our dog Kinko for 15 years. He was my husband companion since college days. And one day he just disappeared out our backyard. We couldn't find him. And it was over a year, almost two years now. I'm bad with dates, so don't quote me on it. <laughs> but I remember probably about four weeks ago, my son comes running in my room. I see Kinko. I see Kinko. So I'm on the phone with another best friend and I'm running outside. Where is Kinko? Where? Kinko! Kinko! Nothing. And my son is adamant. He has saw the dog that he's only known all his life. He's eight. Mm -hmm. Listen, we looked for hours. Mind you, Kinko's been missing a year, but he was still grieving it. Weeks would go by. Months would go by. Jason or my husband is just like, I miss my dog. And I was in a season where like, yeah, I think I'm I'm over. You know, I'm just, I don't have time for a dog, you know? Mm -hmm. But then my husband came back and he was like, I think our season, like we honored his life. Mm -hmm. Our season is over. My daughter, they were uncontrollable with tears because their hopes were like, we found Kinko. Mm -hmm. And then four weeks later, we find ourselves (laughs) introducing now Apollo Mercier, our little Rottweiler, who will be 10 weeks on Sunday. But I'm saying all of this to say, When you share people that you're grieving your pet, they tend to shame you. It's a dog. You don't know what my dog did for me emotionally. You don't know how my dog helped me with my health, mental health by going on walks. You don't know. If you've never had a pet, don't make any comments. They're not human. Some of them are more human than you Uh, because they got compassion. Exactly. And they forgive you. And they you can yell at them in the next moment. They're like, here, treat, treats, right. wagging their tail. It's unconditional love. And mm-hmm. I'm so glad you touched on that because we lost our dog about a year ago. We'd had her for seven years. So she started off as my sister's dog. I talk about this in another podcast. My sister had my nephew and was like, hey, can you take Diamond home with you just for the weekend? And I didn't understand at the time why she was giving me all of her dog food and bowls and stuff. But she was like, I wanted to have a a good home. I'm like, say, I thought, what? I don't want no dog. Long story short, we fell in love with her. Her and I Mm. had the same birthday. 
And Mm. when she got sick, I literally had a mental breakdown because I had her longer than my son's been alive. And -hmm. there were people who shamed me for Mm -hmm. feeling the loss and crying. So I sucked it up and I zipped it up. But there are days still, like even yesterday we were driving. I saw a little chihuahua on the side of the road. Girl, when I tell you I burst into tears and wanted to turn around and go back, my husband, like, if you don't keep driving, that is not diamond. (laughs) But she passed away and we had to watch that, right? But Mm -hmm. it's so emotional. And so many of us hide what we're grieving for that same reason. Because we don't (laughs) want to be shamed or told, get over it, suck it up. It's not even that important. Pet loss is a real thing. And I'm still grieving her. Yeah. Yeah. And as we bring on Apollo into our lives, we also honored Kinko because we made time to honor instead of replace. Yes. Think about a pet fish. If you lost a pet fish, your parent would be like, okay, we're going to go replace the pet fish this weekend. Right. Mm -hmm. But you never honored the first fish. Mm -hmm. And so you have to honor your emotions and have that season of grieving. Because let's go back to when you think about funerals, especially I think in the Black communities. This is Mm -hmm. what I'm thinking about. In the Haitian communities, we have the Mm repast. And I think what people do not realize is that the grieving really starts when everybody go back to normal living. It's not at the repass. (laughs) It's not at the repass. It's when everybody in the distractions of, are you okay? Do you need something to eat? When you realize you in this house by yourself and your husband who was with you two weeks ago is six feet under, it becomes real because you're so fixated on creating this amazing homegoing service that you don't really grieve the first two, three weeks. It's not until the house is quiet. And this has been my mission. For those who are listening and you have a loved one that has lost someone, let everybody check in on them. You can check in too. But once everybody's gone, don't stop checking in. They may not respond. Keep checking in. Allow them to talk about their loved one. Allow them to honor their pain through telling stories and ask, is it okay if we talk about Sam today? Mm. Because oftentimes grievers do not want to put the burden on someone else, but they're dying inside because they do want to talk about the Sam in their life. I just, again, this is something that hits really close to home for me because We lost someone in 2018 who was like my brother and his wife. You know, we Mm -hmm. talk all the time, but we found ourselves avoiding each other because it was so difficult to be around each other without him. But even still, every now and again, we reach out to each other and say, hey, how you doing? Let's laugh about Terrence. Let's talk about how much joy he brought to our life. Mm -hmm. And Sometimes at those conversations, we end up crying, but it's a release and we're processing. And so I love that you are encouraging us to keep checking in on people who have lost people because it's not at the funeral. It's not right after. It's not the repast. It's weeks, days, years, special holidays, anniversaries, those things that they pop up. So, oh my gosh, thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. And it's not just the death. It's whatever heartbreak, grief It's the loss of a job. Bring a meal. Let that mom or dad have one less financial burden to think about because they lost their job. Like just be in tune emotionally. And when they ask and when you go to ask how you can support them, their answer is typically, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. Stop asking. Go to Uber Eats and send over a family dinner. Point blank. You don't even got to drive. Somebody could go bring it for them. Listen. It's those sort of things that are thoughtful and selfless that matter so much, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to put yourself in their position and to the best of your ability, empathize and do something that you know is going to lift their spirits. I love that. Come on, Mm ma'am. Okay. So I 
have a couple of questions that I ask each and every podcast guest. Mm -hmm. And I would like to ask you those. Are you ready? Yes. Yay. Okay. If you could go back in time and have a conversation with the 17-year-old version of you and give her Mm -hmm. one piece of advice and one piece of advice only, what would it be and why? Follow the light and don't pay attention to the darkness. Mm -hmm. I spent too many times grieving or the darkness of me searching my purpose. Mm -hmm. That I was distracted by the darkness that I couldn't see the light. Mm, That's good. Follow the light. Don't get distracted by the darkness. Okay, sis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I be ready. Yeah, you stay ready. (laughs) ready. I already know. Okay. Since this is the Flow and Flourish podcast, tell me one thing that you do on a regular basis to make sure that you're able to flow and flourish. Ooh, my hammock. My hammock in my backyard. It's nice. Listen, there's something about just swinging back and forth. I live in Florida, so the weather, when the weather is nice, especially around oh, you March, said I, April, could, I could come visit. Cause, yes, cause yes, you can. Florida? Yes, you okay. can. All right. Yes, 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 yes. And you know, I mean that. Don't threaten it's... me for the good time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen, and I'm telling you, the hammock. Don't also healing my heart through my hands by being in my garden. Mm -hmm. I think my garden is my spiritual growth. Every time I plant a seed, it's not guaranteed to grow. But when they do, I know God heard my prayer because as I'm planting seeds, I say prayers and the things that do not grow, I say, okay, it's not time yet. That's my way of communicating with my creator. Oh, listen, I don't come to play. 2021. I'm coming to swing in your hammock and plant some seeds. Okay? <laughs> Florida is my favorite place. <laughs> I love that. And it's even symbolic and relevant and realistic to the things that we do on an everyday basis. If we're constantly mm-hmm. planting seeds about how to increase our capacity, how to deal with our grief, how to show up in excellence, eventually we're going to be able to do that. So I love it. Ooh, we. Okay. Mm-hmm. Last but not least, I know you have dropped so many gems and I'm so thankful for that. However, what is the one thing that you want listeners to walk away with today? I really want them to walk away with this idea that in the midst of chaos, they still have purpose. In the midst of chaos, you still on assignment. Mm. And we can't back out of life because it's not being scripted the way we want to. At the end of the day, God is the final edit. And when we try to edit on our own, we create in an atmosphere that is created by us, man, and not our creator. Dang, I'm the (laughs) bomb.com. I just said (laughs) (laughs) And then the bell chime to confirm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Hardeen, thank you so much for being here and sharing your experience. I genuinely love and appreciate and adore you and love love the work that you're doing. Before we head out of here, tell everybody where they can find you. And then I'll also include this information in the show notes, as well as if there's anything you have going on that you want to talk about that people can get in on. You can always find out what I'm up to, what I'm doing at herdeanmercier.com. I'm on all social media platforms at herdeanmercier.com. I welcome you to come play with me on Instagram where I like to show out and Girl, have a good, good, good on time. You hear me? And don't ever be afraid to go into my DMs because I'm living my life on purpose. And my goal is to make sure that you get unstuck to the best of my ability so that you can be released from the pain to activate purpose. I have a mastermind class coming up. So go to my free mastermind talking about heartbreak. Now what? I'm going to be releasing that. And you want to be able to sign up. So I always say go to herdeanmercier.com. And if you really want to get down with me and my audience, y'all already know Nicole is going to be on the podcast. I can't wait for that to release. (laughs) And that podcast is called the Redefining Grief Podcast, which is international. International. International podcast. Yeah. 
Okay. Ooh. So I'm excited about what God is doing, but I allowed him to do it in my life because I was willing to release the pain. Mm. Let go of that grief, y'all. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Thank you for showing up in obedience and doing what God has called you to do and to making grief sexy. Oh, that's what I tell in these streets. (laughs) Grief is healing. Mm -hmm. It's healing. And healing is sexy. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Come on now in these internet streets. (laughs) Yes. You know, we ain't coming to play in 2020 word with our word being consistency. So, ma'am, what y'all don't know is that we are consistency partners. Yes. (laughs) Making sure (laughs) that we are showing up in these internet streets on a consistent basis. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Was this not such an amazing episode? I know for me, really even just talking through about my experience with pet loss and being able to articulate that and work through it, even throughout this podcast, it was like a release. And so I hope that this podcast This episode in particular has really helped you to look at grief in a different way because being able to grieve allows you to heal. And oftentimes we're stuck in that grief and not realizing how it's impacting us in our workflow, in our cash flow, in our health flow. So if you're feeling stuck, check in and see, are you grieving? And like her dean said, grief is not just losing somebody. It could be grieving normalcy, routine, grieving hugging people, just all kinds of things. Grief comes up in a variety of different ways. So I really encourage you to check in with yourself and take stock of what it is that you might be grieving in this season and how it's impacting your capacity. As for next week, listen, I have two more phenomenal women that I'm going to introduce you to, one of them being my girl, Grace, and we're going to talk all about the benefits of being obedient. So you do not want to miss that. And then we're also going to talk to my girl, Nicole. And yes, clearly, I love other Nicoles. (laughs) Don't judge me. But we're going to talk to her about how she started her own law firm and how she manages the demands of her career while really taking care of herself and her family. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you also reach out to her dean and myself and let us know how this episode has blessed you. Make sure that you are sharing this with other women who you also know need to hear it, okay? Sharing is caring. And when one of us wins, we all win. Until next week, I pray that you are blessed, that you are healthy, And I really do take it seriously that you tune in to me on a regular basis. I enjoy being your capacity coach and I look forward to continuing to help you increase your personal capacity by creating balance between your personal and your professional life without ever having to sacrifice yourself, your family, and what matters most to you. Talk to you next week.